spring-loaded camming devices, cams. These were a game changer when they hit the market. These are way easier to place than hammering in a piton and way easier to remove. And you can find more places to put one than you can with nuts, which require a constriction. Anywhere you see a parallel sided crack, you can place a good cam. The four things I look for in a good cam placement are camming range, how closed or open is the cam, a parallel sided crack, rock quality, is there loose rock, do I think it's gonna break, and direction of pull. I want the cam oriented in the direction in which I would pull on it in a fall. Camming range looks like this. This is as wide open as I would want it, right about here where the inside edges of the lobes are making a 90 degree angle. Or some makes of cam don't have that flat inside edge, it's curved, but you can look for the points of the lobes aiming right back at your hand. That would be as wide open as I'd want it. And the other end of the ideal range is right there where the lobes cross. Now, what if we can't find a perfect placement? Wider than ideal, I would say is under cammed, or in extreme cases, tipped out. And I don't like this. This isn't safe. A tipped out cam that wiggles as I climb past it and the rope pulls on it could even come all the way out. Uh, and under cammed, it's generating less outward force and more likely to fail. Um, given a choice between placing this cam wide open or grabbing the next size larger and placing it over cammed, I'll generally choose to do that. This placement is safe. It probably won't fail in a fall. It's generating plenty of outward force. The problem with this placement is there's not much room left for my partner who comes to clean the pitch to retract those lobes further in order to get it out. And we might just leave that fixed in place and that's an expensive piece of gear to lose like that. Um, but given a choice between placing this cam tipped out or grabbing the next size larger and over camming it, uh, the latter is gonna keep me safe. So that's generally what I'm gonna do. Let's look at some actual cam placements and talk about the other factors, rock quality, direction of pull, and parallel sided cracks. This looks like a pretty good cam placement, but there are a couple of problems with it. What's good about it is that the lobes are within that ideal camming range, and I can set it for the expected direction of pull. Here are the problems though. The main problem is that the crack is flaring in an outward direction, and because of that flare, I'm not getting enough surface area contact between metal and rock. The problem that I don't think is a very serious problem, but something I want you to be aware of, is listen. Hear the difference? This sounds hollow, and when you look, there's a thin crack. So it does seem like there's a semi-detached section of rock here. I don't think, based on my knowledge of the rock here in Joshua Tree, that I'm gonna generate enough force to actually pull loose this chunk of rock. So I can make a good placement here by simply solving the problem of the outward flare. I can put this way farther back in, and now it's actually behind a constriction. It's a little bit over cammed. You'll notice the tips of the lobes are slightly crossing, but I still have room to retract the lobes and get it out. I feel like that's a good placement. This is a good cam placement. This meets our four criteria. The lobes are within our ideal camming range. It's set for the direction of pull I expect to generate in a leader fall down and slightly out. The crack is basically parallel sided and even constrict slightly at the outside. We're not wiggling out of there. And the rock quality looks a little mungy, but when I tap on it, it sounds to me like it's solid back in there. I like that placement.